How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Shoes Campers of Southern California out of the City of Industry. And today we're really excited to bring to you a very brand new unit, the Classic 15. A whole lot like the Classic 12, but a whole lot more. Let's get into this, let's get going. So here we are where I love to start at the front of this awesome looking Classic 15. So you see a few things that are a little bit different from the typical HQ models, because this is a classic model and the classics have the front end open. So you have access to two brackets that would hold a five gallon jerry can, or uh, you can place in water cans, whichever you'd like to do, as well as our propane tanks are mounted up here at front. Um, they're latched in here. Right now we have pins to keep it latched, but if you wish to, you can actually put locks on that so that way your propane tanks will be secured. We have, as always, our diamond plate and our diamond plate as rock reflectors, or deflectors, I should say, so that way we would deflect any rocks away from your vehicle, so that way we're not damaging the main part of the camper as well. And as well as, we have our aluminum composite up in here, and then of course we have insulation within these sections to help keep your unit either cool or warm in the, uh, the different months you have going around. And then we have latches. We have two latches on the front right there you can see because this is a pop top. Uh, so this is gonna go up, it's gonna pop up about, uh, gives you about an extra one foot seven inches for the top of the, of, the, uh, of the unit once you raise it up. Now I'm gonna come back down a little bit, back here to the frame. And so our frame, like all our frames, are a hot dipped galvanized steel frame. Uh, it's a tubular type or style frame. And so it, it goes from the front all the way to the rear of the unit giving you that strength that's needed in your off-road environments when you're off boondocking. That way you don't have to worry about bending or breaking your frame or causing any other issues that may be occurring. Also here on the front, as always, we have our nice, I'm gonna wrap this one around here, heavy duty chains. These things are huge, they're heavy, they're massive. So that way we can connect to our vehicle. And again, as a reminder, you're gonna to wanna to crisscross it when you're connecting to your vehicle. Don't go straight across, you're not gonna catch anything. If you crisscross it, it'll help catch. And that's the idea of the safety chains anyway. Here, we also have our plugs. We have our seven pin plug that's gonna plug into your vehicle. And that's going to um, you know, hook up, run your lights, it's gonna your, your turn signals, all that stuff. That's gonna be your seven pin. And then we have an Anderson plug. So if you have, um, say, an extra uh, solar panel you wanna plug in, then you would plug in here and then this would charge your batteries with a spare solar panel. Also here, right here in the front, we have our emergency brake or our handbrake. Now again, while this does set the brakes, it is not recommended to only use this. This is good for a quick little, let's set the brake, let's get disconnected, but before you walk away, before you do your camping, chalk your wheels. You always, always, always need to be utilizing chalks to keep anything from rolling out of place where you don't want to be at, okay? Um, we also have our breakaway cable. So this would also connect to the vehicle separately from the chain. You don't want to attach it to the chain. You set this to the vehicle separately. And then when this pulls out, what that does is electrically that locks the brakes. So that way the vehicle doesn't keep rolling. It will stop and you know be safe on the highway in case something happens. Right here, we also have our, uh, we have our poly block. Now the poly block, it is an articulating poly block. Um, we, it articulates this way for your, when you're turning. This will articulate up and down, gives you about 70 degrees worth of rise, and this entire knuckle will articulate as well. Now if you want more information on the poly block, be sure to check out our YouTube videos where I go a little bit more in depth on our poly block and all the components that go along with it, okay? So as we come around here, the last thing here on the tongue is going to be our jockey wheel. Um, and there's different, several different uh, movements for the jockey wheel. It will swivel up, you pull this lever, this whole bar raises up, use this to lo lose or lower or raise. I'm getting tongue tied here this morning. Lower or raise the whole assembly. And there's also, don't forget the line of demarcation that tells you where to keep it at before you start moving it. And again, for more detailed information on our jockey wheel, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. So that way, and it's again, official Black Series Camper US, 
Make sure you check that out so that way you can see all of our videos within our library to see the different things that I'm talking about. Other walkthrough videos and other components so that way you can see it. So as we come around the corner here, over here on the side, one of the first things that I'd like to point out, as you notice, on the classic models, you'll actually see there's actually no rock guard. The classic models do not have the rock guards on them. But again, a lot of the same other features as the HQs. So as we come up, you might have caught that, uh, you know, we have a stabilizer like there. We have our solar light. And then in our front compartment here, and the front compartments are really neat. I love our front compartments. So we have our vent fan. All right, and there's actually the, the secondary part of the fan, which is a, a filter on the other side. And so I'm gonna open up this compartment here. Now, coming with the Classic 15 is our very own refrigerator. Even says right on it, Black Series. I love this little refrigerator, it's pretty cool. Now, it comes with two styles. It's got like four areas where you can put a can holder. Uh, it's even got a USB plug in it here so you can charge your phone or whatever, but it's really cunning. I'm gonna open this up and let you take a look in here, but it comes with two styles of plug. It has a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug, which is what you'll probably typically be running it off of. And then it also has your standard like 110 plug. Now, the nice part about this compartment, it's a nice deep compartment. And so if you look in here, here, I'm gonna push this refrigerator back in on the slide out tray. I'm gonna slide this back in. And so if you'd notice, there is a marine grade 12 volt plug. So this is where the cigarette style plug would come in. And then there's also like a household style plug. Now this plug is only gonna run off of your shoreline. So if you're plugged into say a generator, plugged into your house, or if you're at an RV park, this plug will run off of your, your shoreline. So it's gonna be more like a GFCI plug, ground fault current interrupter. So you would plug in that. Now the really nice part about this front compartment is there's an exact same size compartment on the other side. Now, it doesn't have this secondary household plug, but it does have the 12 volt plug. So if you decided you wanted to remove your refrigerator and put it on the other side, you could do that. If you wanted to add another refrigerator, you could do that on the other side. So that's the nice part about this front compartment that you can plug in and have many different things into it. So as we move up here, we got our pass-through storage. Now the passer is gonna go all the way across. As you can see, there's a light on the back side, and you know, there's a light here on this side. And there's a few amenities in here. There's actually a tire iron because you have your uh, uh, spare tire is located underneath the unit, so you need that to lower it down. Um, you have um, some other pieces. These are some poles. This is a pole bag because there's actually an exterior shower. Now there isn't an interior shower as well, but there's an exterior shower that will attach to the side of the unit and then what you can do is you can have an outside shower. And so that's what these poles would be for. Uh, in the box right here, that's gonna be uh, your awning uh, uh, accessories. So your awning pole and everything. So if we go, if we travel up from this, we have our speaker antenna, this is for our radio. Uh, not speaker antenna, for our radio antenna. Um, and then we have our awning, it's a Fiamma. And so this goes the, the length of the unit, which is really nice. Um, and it's got the hook to come in here, lower down your awning. And if you continue up onto the roof, we have um, two solar panels. The solar panels are 150 watts a piece. So it equals 300 watts of power coming into your batteries. You have two AGM batteries, so that's 200 amp hours that we're working with. Um, you also have an air conditioner up on the roof, and then you have the bathroom vent up there as well. So the roof is constructed of a single sheet of aluminum. So it covers from the front to the back. It's straight up aluminum. So you're not gonna have to worry about fiberglass or any materials like that. It's a solid piece and singular piece as well, going all the way to the back. Now, as we come back down off the roof, if you look, we have this nice little track right here, which is really great. That way, if you have inclement weather, it's raining where you are, this way the water comes down off and rolls it away from the door to help kind of keep you dry a little bit if you can. And then if you get into the door, we open it up. Now here I'm gonna show you, if I push this lever this way, it's gonna lock it, or it's gonna lock the triple lock. And if I go this way, it's gonna open us up. So the triple lock, real quick, I'm gonna point out, here's our top one, here's our bottom one, and then the middle one. So when I push it away, it goes away. Now if you want more detail about our doors, again, where do you need to go? Our YouTube channel. I got a whole video on how the door works, how it functions. Um, there's a pin right here, I push this pin, the door releases from it. 
So that way we have our screen and then we have our door. And if you notice, the lock is actually on the screen. So you can lock it in this position. So again, for more information on how the door functions, be sure to go to our YouTube channel and look up for function of the door, okay? So as we come down, if you look, we have a pullout. We have a pullout step right here. That one pulls out. Uh, so that way it deploys where you need when you need it out. Um, we have a floodlight, nice little low key floodlight. We also have an, one exterior speaker and two exterior speakers. So these are waterproof. These are marine grade outdoor speakers. So it's okay for them to be out here. Now, when it comes to the radio function, if you use the fade, and I can't remember if it's fade front, fade rear, or fade right, fade left, but if you use the fade, that's gonna get you so you can listen to your radio outside as well as inside, because there's speakers inside as well. So as we're traveling along, we have our, pin, our, our, our hook right here. Our hook is for the door. You hook it to this, holds open. Um, we have one of our windows. It's a Eurovision window. It's a dual pane window um, that ratchets, um, opens up in different levels. So that way um, you can allow different amounts of air in if you wish, um, as well as the locks that are on it. Um, down underneath, if we travel down, we have our uh, full size 265, 75, 16 tires. And underneath that, is what makes every Black Series camper a Black Series camper. And that is, of course, our independent suspension. It's got dual shocks for each arm. Um, it's got heavy duty coil springs, uh, limiting chain to keep the assembly from dropping down too far. But those independent swing arms, that's what really makes it the whole system. So again, every Black Series camper is gonna have that independent suspension because that's what's going to get you into the off-road environment into those boondocky environments where out uh, where out where you want to be so as we keep going along back here we get back here we got another small window right here as well as we get to a door now what's behind mystery door number one here as we come down we look we got our outdoor kitchen so again we're going to pull this lever we're going to slide this out now the classic models do have a little bit shorter of a kitchen. It's not quite as long as the HQ models, but it's still just as functional as can be. So we have our faucet. I'm gonna raise up our faucet right here. And we have our stove. So I'm gonna raise this up. Now the stove also has wind guards on the side. It can rest on, I'll open this up here so you can see. So we have it right here. And then we also have, it's got a clicker start, electric start. Now we've gone to where we have a dual uh, burner on this. So that way there's actually more room to cook with larger pans. Um, and also the pressure is a little bit higher with it. So you actually can get more BTUs out of these burners. Now for the drain on the sink, it does not go into your gray tank. The drain is actually a gravity drain and there's a hose that will pull out of the bottom and that will, there's a hole in the bottom of this and that will allow the water to drain down. So you would run your water, do what you're going to do, throw a five gallon bucket underneath allow that to capture it, and then just dispose of the water whenever it's convenient or if you have a space to do so. Now there's also a water hose. And so if we come in here, which is where our utensils would be, this is our water hose. And the water hose is gonna to connect to the front of the kitchen over there, and it's gonna connect underneath. And so you can see the gas connection and the water connection over here along the front of the unit. So that way um, you connect those two. Now, when you do connect the water, connect the hose, just a quick, a quick note here, when you do go to connect this, and these are quick connects, when you go to connect this, attach to the dry side first, attach to your sink. Because if you attach into your wet side, you can start shooting your water all over the place. So, and then when you're done with it, you wanna kinda do the same type thing, but you wanna disconnect from your wet side first. Again, otherwise, you're gonna be shooting your water all over the place. So that's our kitchen, that's this side of it. So now I'm gonna put this away real quick and we'll be right back. So here we are on the back side. So one of the things I wanna point out is our latches. So we have a latch here on the rear as we had the, we had two on the rear, two on the front to help keep the lid down. Now one of the other super cool features is this right here. Now this is just the back of our trailer. So I was like, ooh, back of the trailer. But here's the cool part. If I undo this, this, now becomes the roof of the back of your bed area. So these are walls, this opens out, this opens out, this base piece comes down, and this is part of your bed. And so this becomes just about a king size bed, one of the largest beds that are available in anything, which is awesome, um, because 
you have this massive space to lay on. So it's really cool. That's one of the exciting features about this unit. Now, if we look down, we also have our spare tire. We got a single spare tire. Now, I know the HQ models, they have a rack. We have dual tires, but obviously with this opening up, obviously we can't do that. So we have a single spare tire. We have recovery hooks here on the base. So that way, if something happens, you get caught up in the area you shouldn't be. Um, instead of hooking onto something you shouldn't causing damage, you have recovery hooks that you can hook onto and help be recovered as you're going along. So as we continue around the other side over here, we're off the bat, we have our hot water heater. Um, it's a six gallon hot water heater. Um, and we have our outside shower. Now, I mentioned earlier the, flat, the poles for the shower. And so the shower actually comes uh, in a bag and it actually attaches into this track right here. It slides on. It's got actually a little piece in it for the windows you have here or for your light. And then it comes down and it's got another piece that goes around this, the outside shower. Now this is normally just locked, but we already unlocked it earlier. So you have a hot, cold shower with a handle. So that comes out so you can be out here with a shower. It's about a three, maybe a four foot shower. And so you stand out here, you can have your outside shower. Um, you can use it as a rinse off shower or your outdoor shower, um, whatever you like to do with it. But again, there is an inside shower as well. As we come along here, we have our general water tank and our black water tank flush. Now, general water tank, your tanks, all in general, your water tank, there's a single water tank. It's not like the HQs where there's dual. There's a single water tank, 26 gallons of water. The black water tank or the black tank, 26 gallon tank. Your gray tank is a 26 gallon tank. So you got 26s all across the board for your water, your black and your gray. Okay, so that's a really nice feature to have that amount of water. This is going to be your black tank flush. So when you're dumping your black tank, which the valve is just up here, um, and I'll show you that in a second. As you're dumping your black tank, you put your black hose in here to help flush out your tank. So you get a nice clean tank. Here is your 30 amp plug. So this is going to be for your shower power. So if you're plugged into a generator, plugged into a wall or a house, bam, that's where you're plugged into. And that's what's going to make your plugs work because the plugs on this unit aren't gonna work off of an inverter, they're gonna be working off of your shore power, okay? Okay, so as we're going this way, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, and we're gonna stop about here because if we take a look underneath, we're gonna have our black and gray tank discharge. So this is gonna be where you're gonna pull up to your sewer station and you're gonna dump your tanks, your black and then your gray. You dump your black first, get all the solid waste out, then you're gonna dump your gray so that way you can rinse out the hose. But again, don't forget, you're still gonna be flushing out your black tank with the flush out back there until you have a clear run through with all of your stuff. So as we move forward a little bit more, we have two more compartments. We've got this upper pass-through compartment. This is the back side of the one I already showed you. And again, here you have, you know, for your, your awning. Here, this is your shower. So this is the tent bag for the outdoor shower that I was just talking about. Um, along with the legs that go along with it there. And then the lower cabinet here, this is just like the one on the other side. Like I told you, they're identical cabinets, which is the nice part. Here's the filter part that goes with the vent fan on the other side. Over here, you have a marine grade 12 volt plug. Um, so that way, if you decide to remove your refrigerator from the one side to put it on this side, you have a 12 volt plug to plug into. And then you, again, you also have the slide out table. Again, it's the exact same size. Um, but also in here, we have some accessories. We have the poly block um, Y hitch. Um, we have some spare uh, bearings. We have the T bar to lower the uh, support legs. Um, we have the leg, uh, it's a magnetic tip. This is the leg for the uh, kitchen. So that way you can support the kitchen, a sewer hose. And of course we have our 30 amp plug in here as well to hook into your side. So there we have it. There we have the full outside walk around for this classic, the classic 15. So now we're going to go take a look inside real quick. So here I am inside the classic 15 and obviously right now it looks like I don't have much headroom because really I don't because the lid is actually compressed. So right now from the floor to the ceiling, you're looking at a height of about five feet. Now, the reason why we wanna show that is because if you are traveling down the road and you're tired and you need to pull over and rest, there's really a lot of room even on the bed with the rear closed in. So you're still looking at about uh, maybe, uh, maybe about a twin size to a full size bed 
even with the lid closed, or the, excuse me, the back closed, which makes it very nice um, because you still have the comfort. Now you might have to duck down a little bit. Um, you know, if you're vertically challenged, you don't have to duck down as much. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up in here and just kind of show you, you know, again, there's not a whole lot of room. Um, I'm 6'1", so I run out of room quick. Um, but again, about five foot right here. And there's a lot of really cool amenities. You have, uh, you know, you have your lift assist with the, the brake that helps hold the, the uh, or the lock, which helps hold the roof up. Um, you have a cabinet right here, which we'll look at in a bit, as well as our control panel. So right now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go out and we're going to open up the back, show you how that's done. And then we're gonna pop this lid open because then once we get the lid open, then we're looking at six foot five inches, which can be a whole lot of room and really gonna open this unit up. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo the hooks on the front. Remember, there's two hooks on the front and two on the back. So usually when I do seal it, I like to throw the loop over the top of it. So I'll just show you real quick. When I am locking back up, I'll put it through and put it through just like that. And same thing when I take it off. I take it off, I'm gonna loosen it. And then sometimes, depending on your adjustments, you might have to unscrew it a little bit and then what I'll do is I'll push that up and I'll put the pin back through it. That way it keeps this loop from catching on this hook when I go to raise the roof in a little bit. So now I'm gonna go back and undo the back. All right, so now that I have that done, now I have the availability to push the roof open when I go back inside. But first, let's open up the back. So again, I'm gonna undo these latches here. I'm gonna raise this up, and then you hold it up, and then you unlatch a wall. This slides out, and we'll set on top of that. And this one, same thing over here. This one will slide out. And then that leaves you with the base. Now the base has a pin. Pull it out, give it a half turn, or a quarter turn, I should say. Pull it out, give it a quarter turn, it catches on a latch, and then that way, when you open it up, this comes down. So now you can kind of see from the, the back side, just all the way through. You can kind of see the roof. You can see there's two pads, because this secondary pad, it's a little bit shorter, um, a little bit not as narrow because it's gonna fit into this section. So what I'm gonna do, there's actually handles on the window here. So I'm gonna grab this, pull this open, and then on the inside, I'm gonna pull this all the way back, on the inside, there's latches that I'll set that will come through these hooks up here. So this is how it's gonna look from the rear. So the roof will overhang. So if it rains, you have inclement weather, the rain's gonna come off, go off the side over here. You got a nice big window so you can see. But so this is gonna be your setup. This is how this is gonna look. Actually, I'm gonna come over this way a little bit and kind of give you a look right here. And you can kind of see overall, it gives you an extra three feet worth of bed. So again, you're going from, like you said, about a full-size bed to about a king-size bed with this extra three feet. So you're looking at about 15 feet in length of living space on the inside. So let's go back inside and let's get this top popped open. So here we are inside. I've released the four latches in the front and the back, the two and two, two and two, or one and one, one and one. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to help lift up the roof. So I can kind of give it a little bit of push. and use that at the same time and then lock it in place. So there's a little pin right here that locks into it. Now what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna go to the back and I need to push that up as well. Now sometimes it raises up, sometimes not. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna raise this up back here. Ah. And then all we gotta do is give it a nice gentle push. There we go. So now we have our tent deployed and you can see my headroom is greatly increased. Like I said, we went from five foot, now we're at six foot five. So let's get into this, we'll look around the rest of this. So here we are at the front entrance area with our wide open space. And so we have the control panel, the control center for the Classic 15. And so you see our typical um, LED readouts for our numbers, so our freshwater tank, we're at 75%. And again, the numbers are at percentages. So this is 75% full for our freshwater tank. Um, our gray is empty, shows our black is empty, but that's because we tested here to make sure everything is not leaking. Um, we have our radio, and again, our radio 
Um, for our interior speakers, we have a, a speaker in the back. We have a speaker here in the front as well. So again, messing with the fade is what's gonna get you to get the sound outside. Um, we have our hot water heater. Again, six uh, gallon hot water heater. The lightning bolt represents electricity. So when you're plugged into a shore power, that way you can get your hot water to work. Um, the flame indicates your propane. So you would be heating your water off of the propane. These are your breakers. The breakers are gonna reset um, the different things if you have any, in, uh, any, in, any issues, such as you know, interior lamps, you know, exterior lamps, your fridge, your 12 volt plug or your water pump. So if you blow a breaker, you just come over here, push the button to reset it. Um, and then we have our digital readout, for, again, for our solar panels, our two solar panels up on the roof, um, how much voltage is in, um, how many um, amps or watts are being used. Again, that's the same measurement, the amps and the watts, it's just a different measurement. Um, but they're measuring the same thing because of how many lights and stuff like that are on. And then you have the kilowatts per hour. This number will always go up because what it's doing is it's reading. It's just like at your home, continuous power. How much power is being used on a continuous basis? Um, and then you have, again, all your switches here. Your main switch, your main switch turns off everything. Um, your interior lamps, um, your fridge. So the fridge that's outside, that turns off that plug, the 12 volt plug out there. Um, this is for a 12 volt switch. Your water pump switch, exterior lamps, um, and your uh, outside speakers. So you need to turn your switch for your outside speakers to work. Um, again, we have a plug, we have a main plug here, as well as a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter style plug, and then a dual USB plug. So you can plug in a couple of cell phones or you know whatever supplies you need to, to plug in. Um, the main, this is actually gonna be working. It's a GFCI plug for when you're plugged in with your 30 amp. Um, and then nice, you have a nice little mirror here, and it's actually behind showing a cabinet. So you can kind of see in here, not sure if we have a light in here, no, no light in there. Um, but we have a nice deep cabinet in here, um, so you can store things, which is really nice. Nice light level countertop. Now one of the nice, re really nice things is the amount of storage space underneath this cabinet. Let's see if I can hold these open here. It's huge, huge. There's a lot of storage space in these units. It's fantastic how much room there is. Because while you have this cabinet here, you also have, and unfortunately you can't get to it because there's another cabinet over here that opens up. Um, it's a real deep cabinet over here as well. And that actually will extend all the way back over to here, basically. Um, that's a really nice cabinet. So as we step up in here, I'm gonna step across here. Um, and I'm gonna point out, the nice part is, we have this vinyl material. It's a PVC, not vinyl, sorry. This is a PVC, flexible PVC material. And so this is really gonna help with um, your waterproofing like against mildew, um, you know, keeping water out and stuff like that. Um, this has a privacy door. So if you're taking a shower, you can zip that up when you're in. So you can have some privacy or leave it open if you're not worried about it. Um, there's a lock in here. So as you open up, if you look in the, uh, in the wet bath, um, you see you have a toilet and you have a sink. Um, and the faucet on that sink is actually pulls out and is your shower head. So it doubles uh, its position as a sink and as a shower head. Um, so you have a nice little space in there. You can get in there, shower, wash off. Um, but again, keep in mind, you only got 26 gallons. So if you're out boondocking, you wanna be reserving your water. And besides you're camping, so it's okay if you get dirty, right? Right, it's camping. All right, so as we look over here on our other side, we have our TV um, as well as our lights. And I'm gonna pull this out a little bit so you can see our lights. We have these lights that are located around the unit um, as well as a 12 volt plug back here. So again, we have the dual USB plug um, and we have the 12 volt um, plug for your lighter style type stuff. Um, now the TV right now is plugged into a GFCI. So you're not gonna be, you're gonna be running it off of that. Um, off of being plugged into your 30 amp plug, okay? Now, as we come along here, the sink. I love the sink. You have this huge cabinet space. So, or a, a huge counter space, not cabinet. So there's a ton of counter space here. So you can really see, I mean, it's a nice sink. Um, you can set stuff up. Um, you can use different things. And there's actually a ventilation fan over the other end of the cabinet um, with a light. There's a light with a vent fan. And so that's gonna allow you um, to pull in. Now, again, it's recommended you open up your windows and definitely, definitely, definitely run your vent fan as you're cooking. So if you brought in like a Coleman stove and then place the Coleman stove 
um, or whatever kind of camping stove you may have. You can use this surface, but make sure you're always running this vent fan so you can vent out any fumes that may be coming off of the cooking, the, uh, the cooking surface um, or any smoke or whatever it may be. You always want to be venting out the heat and the smoke or the fumes from the fuels that are coming off. Obviously, safety, safety, safety. Make sure we're being safe, okay? So below this beautifully long, large cabinet is, and, and again, this is really exciting. I love this. Um, how much cabinet space? Look at, look at again, how much cabinet space you have underneath this cabinet. It's, it's massive. Um, and it's really exciting uh, just to see this much cabinet space in this unit. It's, again, it's a small compact unit, tons of space, tons of space, really nice. So we're gonna close these up. And then we also, at the very end, we have some drawers. So the drawers are gonna be for storage or they're, you're gonna have your utensils. So again, really nice, really deep drawer, big drawer. So you can put a lot of things in here and there's another one here, another nice deep drawer. Um, and then down here, as we get into this, we have another little storage compartment, cool little storage compartment. Um, you can put, I don't know, rolls of toilet paper, rolls of paper towels, um, whatever kind of small things you can fit underneath that cabinet area. So here in the back of the Classic 15, like I said, this is, uh, this is the part I love about this. This thing is huge. Look at the size of this bed. So when it's closed, keep in mind when it's closed, it's the width of this mattress pad right here that you have for use. And again, this is eh, maybe not quite a full, but at least it's definitely a twin, but it's a decent sized pad. And then the secondary pad, once you've opened up the back, you slide that into place and then you put those two together and you've got this big, nice, massive, you just huge king size bed. I love this feature, one of the best features ever. Um, we have a couple of reading lights, so that way you can do it. And again, the reading lights are a touch system. So again, right now they're on. So if you touch the button, if you touch the button, it gives me a little blue ambient light. The light's not on yet. If I touch it again, the reading light comes on. Now, if I come in here and I touch and hold, now you can see the light's getting dimmer. So it's a dimmer switch and I touch and hold again and you can see it's getting brighter. So that's one of the nice features about this little system that it has a dimmer switch. One of the other things that you can see if you actually look behind me here, I'm gonna go this way, is our fans. We got these little 12 volt fans. We have one on each side and these are powerful little suckers. They really move air really well and makes it nice and comfortable in here in their unit. And like I said, you have another one on this side, which is kind of nice. Now underneath this pad, um, which we're gonna get to, let me see if I can do this up here. I'm gonna lift this pad up. Underneath this pad, there's a couple of compartments um, just for importance sake. So the first one lifts up and that's actually your heater. So that's gonna be your access to your heater. The second one lifts up and that's your electrical box. Um, and then the third one actually lifts up and that's your water pumps. So if you ha need access to your water pumps for whatever reason, um, that's how you're going to be able to access those uh, things. Now along the front over here on the side in the corner, and I'll sit down here. And so you have your thermostat control for your furnace. So, and again, the furnace is right here but that's your control for it. That's your thermostat to turn on your heater. And then below my legs here, actually I'll move my leg. There's again, another 12 volt plug and a dual USB plug right here. So a lot of great amenities, a lot of great space, a lot of great room just in this little area alone. And that's again, why I love this unit. It's a great, great unit with a lot of amenities to it. So let's take a look. We're gonna look over here at our drop down bunk. So again, this unit will sleep four people. You got two here. Um, the dinette, which is actually already in its bed configuration. Let me smooth it out a little bit better there. There we go. So we have a dinette that will break down into a bed area for someone to sleep. And then we have our drop down bunk. So right now I have it in the up position. So and that's the position you can have it in during the daytime. Um, but then in the evening hours when it's nighttime, this would just pull down. This would lift up so that way there is a ledge. That way you keep someone from rolling off this thing. And actually here on the back of this wall right here, which where the speaker is, um, there's actually a couple steps. So they can be used to kind of climb up in here, um, you know, for you know a child or maybe a, a smaller adult. Um, but yeah, it's a nice size bed up here for someone to lay on, to sleep on. Um, this is the position and this with this down, it needs to be in when the roof comes down. Um, you can't have it up. Um, you can't have the wall up. You need to have this down and in the down position 
for when the roof comes down. Um, and as I'm talking about the roof, again, here's our air conditioner. So this unit does have an air conditioner um, as well as you know some LED lights that are up here. But yeah, we have our nice air conditioner. We got our vent uh, for our stove area. Um, but yeah, a lot of nice features for this thing. Um, the zippers, there's a lot of windows on this unit. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five zip open windows um, and amongst the other normal windows that open up as well. So you get a lot of airflow through this unit, which is really nice. Um, I'm gonna push this up and out of the way. Um, so that way we can get into our bed area or our dinette area. Um, again, here's that second speaker. And we have a lot of nice pouches along here too. Um, you can put magazines or papers or whatever you wanna put in there. Um, but we have our bed area here um, with a plug. And again, this is working off of the main. So you'd have to be plugged into um, a shoreline or a generator for your plug to work. Um, again, you have your bed configuration. So to get out of bed configuration, you pull off your top pads. I'll set these back here for right now. And so what I'll do, actually, you know what? I'm gonna talk about underneath right here. And so let me do this first. So that way you can see a little bit easier with the table down. So when we look into this compartment right here, so this compartment right here is actually where the inverter is. It's a 1000 watt inverter. It can handle a 2000 watt surge of energy, but it is a 1000 watt. Um, the switch is on the front side of it. So you have to, you know, it's a small little round rubber switch. So you have to kind of feel around, feel for the switch, click it, turn it on. So you have an inverter. So you can use the inverter uh, to plug in a few things, maybe like a coffee pot. You have to plug it in kind of directly to it. Um, you know, it'll run a coffee pot depending on the model. Um, if you're not running too fancy of a, of a coffee pot. Um, and then over here on this side, we'll get into this side here. And so this side, is going to be two AGM batteries. Um, so there is um, two AGM batteries, which is 100 amp hours a piece. Um, and then you have a battery charger right here um, in the front of the compartment as well, um, as well as your charge controller. So there's a lot of things going on here. There's also the breakaway controller located in this compartment as well. Um, and then you can see on top of the batteries, um, you have a main battery cutoff. So you can have cut off everything all the batteries um, and then you have some breakers in here as well for um, the inverter for the battery charger for the solar charger for solar controller um, and then the towing vehicle and the control panel so there's a lot going on in this cabinet um, but one of the nice things is again having those two agm batteries in that location so i'm going to raise this up here so that way we can get it up into now sometimes this does hang up, there we go, locked in place. So now we have it in our dinette configuration. Um, so the way this works, there's this handle right here. This raises up, you can see it raises up, um, and then it would lower down exactly the same. Here, I'll show you real quick. Yep, there we go. It lowers down just the same, locks back in position, back up. So again, here it is in our dinette configuration. Um, so that way you can sit and eat um, you know, you can fit a couple people there, obviously. Um, and I think that's just about it for the interior of our Classic 15. So as we're back out here on the outside, looking at the overall length with the back area open, you're looking at about 23 feet overall. Now, if you close that up from the poly block to the rear, you're looking at about 20.1 feet. Now, with the lid closed um, and the air conditioner on top, you're looking at about eight foot 10 inches of height for your storage. And then width wise, you're looking at about six foot nine inches for your overall measurements all the way around. So there you have it, the classic 15, all the way through, front, back, up and down. And we hope that I was able to explain everything to you and you were able to build some interest in this fantastic unit, especially that bed area. Love it, and all the cabinetry. So again, this is Jim Buck, Black Juice Camper, Southern California, out of the city of industry, saying take care, everybody. We'll see you out there. How you doing, everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Juice Campers of Southern California, out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Bach with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.